Yo, what's up, dudes? How you doing? What's up? Haven't been on in like a week. My my videos always go way down in the summer because I just don't have as much time. Kids are out of school, a lot more going on. Anyway, Bobby came by the other day and brought a couple of new guitars. Uh, this one here, which is pretty much identical to a guitar that we both owned. I owned first and he owned, I sold it to him back in, I bought mine in 84 and it looked like that one there with the rosewood fingerboard and the beak neck looked almost identical, pretty much identical to that one there, except the neck on that one's a little nicer. It's an 80, that's an 83, and the neck is a little smaller. My 84, the neck got kind of big. And uh, this is an 86, and in 86, uh, they went to the different uh, headstock. It, it, there was an intermediary one where they went to a uh, what they called the hockey stick or the... Um, uh, the banana headstock um that that was a transitional it, 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 kramer was a sort of a moving target they never really stuck with one design for very long so they had a strat headstock and fender put an end to that the beak headstock right there that beak headstock was basically the fender headstock and they they cut the the ball end off and and shaped it into the into the, the what's called the classic beak and then um they went to this they went to the hockey puck hockey puck hockey stick style uh headstock and then they finally went to this one which they sort of kept for the rest of the time this sort of what they call the pointed beak the droop beak the you know whatever you want to call it um this is an 86 and you can see from the lettering there from uh, the old Kramer. It's a slightly different uh, lettering job than what they ended with. They ended with a large K with slightly smaller R and they just kept getting smaller and it just sort of went down as it went across, sort of filling the gap between the edge of the headstock and the tuning pegs. I never cared for that one. That's the only head, uh, logo I never really... I like this one. That's sort of the, the classic one that I remember, the sort of the, the gold square block, sort of 3D shaped one. Anyway, um, he came by, brought this one, and he brought, he brought this one here, which is a, you know, a later version. Um, still has the same neck. I think this is a focus body, though. Uh, just looking at the pickups, I'd say it is. That sounds like something Bobby would do. <laughs> you know? I don't want that. I don't want that falling over. Um, so anyway, the, the cool thing about this one is that um, it is spot on like the one we, we both owned back in, let's see, I bought, I bought mine in 80, 84, spring of 84, um, by 86, I really hated it. I mean, I, I never really liked it from the start because, like I said the, in the prior video, uh, the neck had changed. It had gone from the neck that's on that one, which is a little bit smaller, rounder C-shape, uh, to a big, flat, what they called a boat bottom. It was an eighth of an inch wider, which is a lot wider. I know that doesn't sound like much, trust me, in guitar terms. That, that might as well be a mile. It's huge. And uh, so I never really dug it. And they came out and they got these Kramer necks. They, these new Kramers came in and... I said, geez, I w I'd love to get a Kramer neck. And the, the guy I work for said, uh, you know, we, we can probably order you one. I said, we'll find out how much it is. It was 120 bucks. I said, oh, do it. Do it. And I, I think a lot of companies wouldn't sell necks. Kramer would, but a lot of companies wouldn't because they didn't want to ha have their neck and headstock out there, you know. So I got the, the neck and the headstock. And um, I want to say... Um, I forget if I moved my hardware over to it or if it came with tuners. Jeez, I forget now. I forget if it came with the tuners or if I transferred the tuners over. But at any rate, um, 
Jeez, that's a great question. I don't. I, it must not have. No hardware. It, it couldn't have come with hardware. So I had to come with no nut, no string tree. And I'm pretty sure I sent it down to Wolf at MISC to have them switch it over. And I had the stock pickups, but I changed this one for a Seymour Duncan Invader for the longest time. Uh, that was probably put that Invader in in like the spring of '84, and then uh, at some point I changed it to a Demarzio. Uh, that, at least that's Bobby's story. I thought I sold it to him with the. Seymour da Duncan Invader in it, but he swears I didn't, and he might be remembering better than than I do. And um, it had a, a Demar. I could have sworn he put the Demarzio in it, but I don't know. I was sort of a Duncan guy. It doesn't sound like me, but maybe it was. I mean, for all I know, we could have got a Demarzio in at the store, you know. And I and I just went with it, and I didn't like the the Invader as being like too hot, you know, even for me at the time. Um, but geez, I I don't really remember. I could have sworn I because what happened to the invader if I didn't sell it to him? It's like I would still have that around. I'm not much for just throwing that. I would never just throw that out. But at any rate, uh, and I certainly don't remember selling the invader. But I don't know. Could be wrong. Anyway, these are sort of your mid '80s uh, Kramers. Uh, there's your '83 model. This is an '86, and that one over there is sort of a transitional to '87. Uh, you get your square edged body, a little bit larger horn, you know, on it than these. Uh, and you can even see the difference, I think, even between this one, which is more of a classic strat shape, to that one where they had sort of offset that upper horn a little bit on the 83. So sort of an interesting change. Um, to me, this is like the year. I really liked the sort of, uh, some people would tell you it's really the, the hockey uh, stick headstock that's like the year, right? That was sort of like the 84. Uh, and in fact, some of the 84 models that have like a non-tilt back offset, known as like the Grail model, um, those are pretty uh, sought after by collectors. But, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of like these. And this one has just got nostalgia through the roof because it looks so much. I think mine had uh, black speed knobs. Uh, didn't have the, um, uh, the these chrome, you know, knobs, but uh, more like that, though. Whoever put that together put one chrome knob at the end for some reason. That's why people... <laughs> <laughs> I'm running through amplitude still. I'm just so in love with these orange amps. That's the tiny Terra uh, again. Terra. And I think what was so you know hot about these guitars when we first got them is you could go. still in tune. And I think that um, the one they wanted to put on was the Rockinger and Eddie Van Halen, who, you know, knew a little bit more about staying in tune uh, than, the, than the, the guys who were designing it, was like, no, absolutely not. This, this Floyd Rose is, is a much better system. You lock it between two points, point A, point B, boom, locked. There's no place for the for the string to go. And the funny thing is, is Floyd Rose actually owned the patent that the nut itself was a clamp. Um, I think uh, Kaler came out with one, sued, gone. Um, they had to put it behind the nut. Ibanez just put theirs behind the nut. Fender put a side clamp one uh, that had these slots, and when you pivoted this little lever on the side, uh, this little curved lever that would fit in the in the space here, you would push that up. Uh, of course, some people would, it had a, a tension knob on the other side, and if you put it too tight, you could just snap it off. I think I did that once at the store. I felt terrible, and I was trying to find the right screw, and they were like, you know, it's under warranty. We'll just, we'll just get a warranty fix. We'll let them know it got broken in the store from a customer, and, you know, they, they'll, they'll just, and sure enough, they did. They fixed it. But, uh, I'm pretty sure Fender got called got called out by Floyd Rose and said, "Oh no no no, the the, the nut itself cannot be a clamp. I own that patent," and uh, and he did, and and that was the end of that. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, it, it's just sort of interesting how the you know how the whole thing played out. And I'm pretty sure Kramer may have had 
uh, maybe an exclusive um, a licensing deal with Floyd Rose because I didn't see Floyd Rose on too many other guitars. Floyd Rose licensed, Floyd Rose, you know, sort of a knockoff, you know, or an attempt to, to do what Floyd Rose was doing. But eventually everyone just licensed it from Floyd Rose because they, they you know, better to license it than fight him. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was a. So, what's this say? This is E. Yeah. So, I think that's um, C or B. I think then D would be what? 84. This is E, so this is like 85, 86. <laughs> These old Kramer guitars, I love them, but not a little bit of a nostalgic kick. So this is Bobby's, and that one's Bobby's, and that one's mine. But uh, you can sort of see the transition, right, from this style uh, in 83 to this style in 86, and that's sort of a transitional to 87. The 87 would really sort of look like that, except the the headstock would start to uh, say the Kramer in the, in the descending format. But other than that, it's pretty much the same guitar. All right, guys, quick video. What time is it? It's time for me to get going. <laughs> get a little closer look at this. Oh, yeah. Chock full of beaky goodness. <laughs> Yeah, all right, dudes, as always, rock on.